are uh, a tad bit obsessed with true crime. And so we have paid close attention to what is going on with Karen Reed, who is the former Bentley University professor accused of murdering her boyfriend, John O'Keefe, who was a Boston police officer. If you don't know the circumstances, uh, they were out uh, together with a group of people at a bar, went back to a house party. Karen Reed maintains that she dropped uh, John O'Keefe off and he went into the party. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Commonwealth maintains that she uh, backed into him and uh, he died as a result of that. And they have charged her with murder. And I would like to welcome our official correspondent when it comes to the trial to the show, Ted Daniel of Fox 25. Hey, Ted, how are you? Good morning. I feel like I'm getting ready for seven weeks of battle here. And this is <laughs> people are so intense on yeah. both sides of this case, like I've never seen before. I was going to ask you. You uh, you were our official correspondent on the old show on a trial. I don't remember what it was. Uh, it was Aaron Hernandez. Yes. It was the yes. And I'm trying to remember. It was the first one. Or, I think it was both. It was yeah. so he went to trial in Bristol County. He also went to trial in Boston. So I think we did both. And that was that was another one that just had you know day after day. It was something new. But from a, from a focus when it comes to the public's interest. Have you seen a trial? I guess maybe, you know, the, the, the Hernandez trial comes close, but I have not seen a, a trial here in this state that has so many people questioning what's going on uh, other than this. And I think that's largely due in the part now that you have social media, you have YouTube bloggers, you have so many people who can from anywhere in the world can get interested in a case and can start reading the court documents and providing their own analysis. And there's a huge audience for that. Yeah. And that is what's fueling, I think, this intense interest because you have so many people who realize that this is such an interesting case. Is Fox 25 broadcasting the trial? Is anybody broadcasting the trial as it begins today? Yeah, I, I, we're going to be streaming it. So okay. we have a couple of streams on our website, and um, it's going to be live during one of the streams. It's one of the things – I think Court TV is the pool camera, so that means they're responsible for, like, having someone in there uh, to record it. And, you know, in with this trial like this, they've already pre-miked every single location in the courtroom – And there's been like, you know, weeks of emails going back and forth between the court and reporters and and the and the television stations about the rules, about what you can and cannot do. And they had, you know, they set a lot of restrictions just to make sure that, you know, things stay orderly. I don't remember a time where a judge uh, like this judge ruled that no one can protest uh, uh, for either side, buffer zone uh, in the general area of the court, which is uh, the Norfolk Superior Court in Dedham. Uh, what's the di- what's the distance that they must stay away today and throughout throughout this trial? Yeah, so the prosecution wanted 500 feet. Uh, the judge settled on 200, and I guess there has been two cases prior, including one in Nor- at least one in Norfolk County where there was a similar buffer zone. So I think the idea behind that is you have all these people who've been out in front of the courthouse with free Karen Reed signs and clothing. They rent the, uh, you know, that truck that drives by with the big screen on it. Yes. Yes. That's that drives around the courthouse as well. So I think the idea is, okay, the jury has to enter through that same door And if that jury's going by, you know, hundreds of people protesting every day, they're feeling that the jury may, you know, that that may impact their thinking. So they will begin today in trying to impanel a a jury. Um, What? And I was going to say, I don't know if it's because I'm just obsessed with the case, so I believe everybody else is. But how difficult will it be for them to get unbiased jury members? Somebody who hasn't heard about this, they could get wiggy. Well, uh, Wiggy knows yeah. a little bit, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know a little bit, but I'm, like, so confused in the sense of what is the prosecution's main point of evidence saying that she did do it, and then what's the defense's... What's the main point of evidence? 
Yeah. Uh, essentially, it is the taillight fragments that they say they found. Correct, Ted? Yeah. Yeah, and they they say they have his DNA on the taillight, hmm. and they say that there were microscopic pieces from the taillight found in his clothing. Hmm. That was, that's pretty good. But other than that, there's no eyewitness, right? Who saw her? No. Who, who saw her do nope. it? Right. There are uh, obviously some conflicting issues when it comes to those who were a part of that event that evening. Uh, the the defense attorneys on Friday uh, brought up uh, Brian Higgins, who is uh, an ATF agent uh, who was a witness, but then. And again, this is what the defense is going to claim in, during this trial, I guess. Uh, then went and uh, went to a military base on Cape Cod and destroyed his phone, including mm. the SIM card, which uh, which Ted would seem like an uh, an odd thing for somebody to do. No, that's shady. That's absolutely shady, and it doesn't make any sense. And remember, we're getting a lot of this information about. So the you know, the prosecution has identified all these people that they say are witnesses in the case. They're witnesses for the prosecution. Well, you have a separate federal investigation that took place. Um, the feds, you know, got wind that something might not be right here. And so they impaneled a federal grand jury to investigate law enforcement and to try to get to the bottom of what happened. And although we know no resolution from that, they turned over 3,000 pages of documents from their own investigation, which um, the defense wants to be allowed to talk about during the trial. Um, so that it, it, that's, I guess, one of the things that gives this whole cover-up credence thing, it gives this whole you know idea of, of some sort of cover-up credence is the fact that you know, the feds got onto this case and typically they're not just going to say, oh, we want to go investigate a case in Canton, you know, hmm. Ted, Ted, watching the videos coming out of the courtroom on Friday, I, I always find it interesting to watch the other people, uh, the other main players sitting behind uh, Karen Reed or the or the prosecution. It, for you, how important is it your job to make sure that you are taking the temperature of the room? I can't imagine being a family member of John O'Keefe sitting in that courtroom and hearing the different details that came out on Friday. Yeah, and John O'Keefe's family has gone through a lot of loss. They they lost uh, their daughter and her husband. So John was taking care of his niece and nephew. So this is like amazing loss for them, uh, you know. And I think that they it, it's so important. I think that that people understand that you know this is their family member. This is who they lost, and you know they have to deal with this. It sort of with all the circus atmosphere going on around them. So the case, they will try, they'll start today to get a jury. They expect that it may be six or seven weeks and until this kid, both sides have presented their case. Commonwealth will try to prove that she backed over him and that resulted in his death. The defense will suggest that there is a cover-up going on and that the Mass State Police are involved, the the uh, district attorney's office is involved, mm -hmm. and that others were responsible for his death. That's uh, essential, essentially what's going to happen here over the next six weeks. Yeah, so the, um, the defense is trying to get in what's called a – it's a third-party culprit defense so that they can say, no, she didn't do it. These people did it. And on during Friday's hearing, they named three people who, for the first time, they, you know, you got the feeling that these are the three that they want to say were the ones who were either the ringleaders or the one who actually, they claim, attacked John O'Keefe. But we're still, as far as I'm aware, we're still waiting for the judge to even allow them to bring in that third-party culprit defense. Because mm. that has to be approved by the judge. Yeah. Can well, the dog be brought up during trial? Where the dog is, how they put the dog down, was the dog involved with the attack? Is that going to be able to be brought in? I think the defense is kind of, I don't think they're going with that theory anymore because um, I think they did, de my understanding is that there was testing 
uh, that looked at the wounds on John O'Keefe's arm. So if you look at the autopsy photos for people who have been following this case, there are what some people say are dog bites on his arm. And my understanding is they did this testing at a lab in California and there was no dog DNA found in, you know, within the the samples that were taken. So the, the defense has, you know, that seemed to be kind of a very uh, important uh, route that the defense was going to take sort of initially. But that is y- you haven't really heard a lot about that, you know, in the last few months. If, if well, they did they have like an if they had an autopsy. Right. And if there are. The medical. Do cons- uh, you cons- want me to answer your question? The medical examiner mm-hmm. said that the they could not determine the cause of death. No, no, but that's it, the official, correct, Ted? Yeah, the the ma- she, no, she, the manner of death, correct. Manner the of manner death. of death could not be determined. The cause of death was blunt impact trauma and hypothermia. Right, but, but the manner of death, meaning right. vehicular yeah. or Murder, otherwise, suicide, right. could not that, be determined. Yeah. Well, no, the only reason I'm asking because if there are people that think that. He might have been beat up. Were there any facial facial lacerations on? Well, he had bruising on his hands. No, but yeah, what about you look, his, when you his... look at the pictures, mm-hmm. and I, I I haven't seen enough autopsy photos of people who've been hit by a car. Mm-hmm. But when you look at the autopsy photos, it looks like he got beat up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what you would imagine is what it looks like. Okay. So, all right, Ted Daniel. What time does does day one get underway this morning? Uh, nine o'clock is when court begins. So okay. I'm, uh, getting in the car and heading there now. All right. Well, thank you. And you'll join us throughout the trial with any interesting updates. Thank you so much. And, Absolutely. uh, we will be streaming it. Courtney and I, at least will be streaming it all day today on Fox 25 yes. on the website. So thank you, Ted Daniel.